Okay guys, so um, this is all dry now and I'm ready to move on to adding color. And this is always a little scary. Definitely um, using my courage to um, move forward with the next stage here. Um, <laughs> so wish me luck. Anyway, I um, like I mentioned, this is all acrylic. We're gonna now move to oil. If you wanna stay with acrylic, of course, go ahead and do that. Um, I've just really uh, fallen in love with oils again and again, and I'm just have to answer that call and start using them more. So, um, and again, this project can be done in any medium. Um, you know, the, the idea is for you to illustrate or, or compose a piece that's about your spirit animal or an animal that you connect with, um, that you admire or adore or whatever. And let me tell you a little bit about what's on the palette here. Um, so this is just a gray disposable palette um, paper. And in this little dish, I have some of the Galkid. Um, this will be like my medium. And you could also use linseed oil. So um, either Galkid or linseed oil are what I use uh, when I use oil paints as my medium. And then as my solvent, I have um, Gamsol, which is a odorless mineral spirit. And I just have that in one of these coil jars. And um, I will put the videos for my intro to oil um, in this month so that you guys can refer to those if you are just getting started with oils. On my palette here, I've got, um, this, I use mostly Gamblin oil paints. Um, you do not have to use Gamblin, it's just what I choose to use. They're made here locally in Port Portland, Oregon, which I love. Um, so this is cadmium medium red. Uh, or cadmium red medium, excuse me. Um, this is cadmium yellow medium. Uh, then I have some Naples yellow hue here. I've got their warm white, uh, titanium white, uh, raw umber, burnt sienna, Payne's gray, cerulean, and ultramarine. And so those are the colors that I have out. Um, again, kind of going back to being inspired by um, Isabel Bishop, I'm going to be kind of starting really thin and kind of scumbling the paint on uh, and kind of build up. I like to do my darks thinner and then my lights uh, a little bit more opaque, a little heavier application. I'm going to start to kind of infuse this with some blues or some smoky gray blues um, using the paints gray and white. So you'll see me doing that. Um, and I'm just going to get started. It's the hardest part, right? We all know. So uh, when working with oils, you know, you have the rule of fat over lean, meaning that you want your thinner layers to be underneath, like your first layer should be thinner, and then you can build up to fatter or thicker applications. Um, that's just kind of the rule of thumb with, with oil application. I don't tend to use oils in an impasto sort of way at this stage of my creative journey. So, um, you know, I don't really have to worry too much. I also don't work in a ton of layers. Um, we'll see. I don't think because of the nature of Isabel's work and because I'm inspired by the look of it, um, I'm, you know, I probably won't, I, this isn't going to be a heavy application either. It's going to be more subtle, uh, using, um, a Princeton Select round blender, size six, my favorite brush, as you guys know. Um, and I'm using a little bit of the medium just to kind of loosen the paint up. If you've never used oil paint before, you'll find that it can be a little bit stiff. Um, and so this medium just loosens it up. I could also use a touch of Gamsol that will make it almost like more watery, um, but I don't want it to be too slippery uh, or too watery. Um, so I'm not actually using much of the Gamsol at this point. And the thing, the beauty of oil paint is of course the blendability and the work time. Um, unlike acrylics, you know, um, these stay wet for a very long amount of time. So you can really, um, work colors together. You can get some beautiful effects, some beautiful transitions, and I really, really enjoy that about, about oil paint. And not for everybody, but definitely worth trying. And 
you know, you don't need all the colors that I suggested. You could start out with a really simple primary set if you wanted to. So, of course, I don't have Isabel Bishop here sitting with me, but from what I can, you know, get from looking at her work online, and of course I did see some of her work in person yesterday at the Portland Art Museum, um, she, it looks kind of very dry brushed like this. It's kind of scrubby, and it looks like she builds her values up kind of gradually. Um, and there's some elements of, there's opaque areas, and then there's areas that are more transparent. And that really appealed to me. So I'm trying to work in that sort of way. I'm building the dark in. It really just kind of getting warmed up here. I mean, I'm using very little amount of paint. The thing with oil paint too is that, especially if you're new to it, you know, you don't want to be globbing it on because you're going to quickly find that you have so much paint, wet paint, on your board or on your canvas or whatever you're using um, that you can't, you know, you kind of lose it all. It gets crazy. Um, it takes forever to dry and then you get frustrated because you can't, you've kind of lost control of it. So I recommend starting, starting slow. You know, don't be, I mean, unless you're really going for an impasto look or, you know, something very opaque. Um, I like to kind of build up. The other thing I love about oil paint is that it doesn't dry darker. A lot of times with our, as you guys know, with our um, acrylics, they, they dry down. And so you think you've got the perfect color and then you come back and it's dried quite a bit darker. That can be a little bit frustrating sometimes. So you won't have to worry about that with, with oil paint. So Payne's Gray is going to kind of be our, what you might call our mother color. I want it to be in the shadows. Um, and what I mean by that is that it's going to be an, a color or a tone that you see um, throughout the piece. You're going to see it in the shadow areas. And so it'll be kind of a unifying color. And that's what I mean by the mother color. It'll be kind of something um, a color that you see, you know, infused with almost everything in the piece. I'm really kind of pressing quite hard, um, and that's the beauty of using board. I can really put quite a lot of pressure down and really work this paint into the surface to get that yummy sort of smoky, um, scumbly look. If I get dark, too dark somewhere, I can always come back and lighten things. Because as I mentioned, my um, the way I apply lights with well, opaque well, the way I apply lights with acrylic and with um, oils is that you know they're going to be a lot more opaque, so I'll be able to lighten areas up. I actually think it's better to go a little bit deeper with your shadows than not deep enough. I'm only using the one color so far, just the just the Payne's gray. I know that this side of her face is all in shadow, so I can go ahead and put that in. And going back to, um, you know, transferring an image onto your board, um, 
I know I mentioned it before, but please don't feel bad if that's something you want to do. Um, artists have done this for centuries. Um, if you are a person who's still working on your, your drawing skills and they're not quite up to where you're getting the likeness that you want, there's absolutely nothing wrong with transferring um, a photograph or an image. Um, as long as it's not, you know, a copyright protected image, you know, you're pretty safe. And, um, and it's really, if, you, if you're missing out on the joy of painting a portrait because you're just, you know, still new at learning how to draw and how to get likeness, like, this is a great way to do it. Um, and then you also get the pleasure of painting. You know, if you've been wanting to paint a portrait but you can't seem to get, you know, the right likeness freehand, um, you know, there's no shame in, in, in doing it this way and, and learning this way. So be, be kind to yourself and allow yourself the experience um, if you if you want to do this way. And I mean, for me, you know, I, I do believe that drawing is really important um, if you want to be doing portraits and things like that, uh, or really anything. Observation is really key and, and so important in the artistic journey. But if you also don't want to, you know, spend all day erasing and, and correcting your mistakes, um, go ahead and transfer the image and get to the painting and have fun and make art. The most important thing is that you're making art. You know, it's, there's no uh, hard and fast rule that says you can't transfer an image. So don't let other people or your own mind rob you of the opportunity to create um, the way you want to create. And like I mentioned, it still takes a lot of skill to paint and you're still going to learn a lot from the process. Um, I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't want to always do this because I do enjoy drawing freehand, but to make it more approachable and get it get going, I think it's a great way to do it. All right, so I'm kind of digging where this is going. I like the shadow areas that I've included in here. Um, I think I'll start to, uh, well, actually, I think I might darken her eyes a little bit. Uh, I think I want to go ahead and start using um, just kind of scumbling in some some flesh tone, kind of get some of that going. So I'm using my Gamsol now to rinse the brush, just to clean it off. You don't technically have to do that. I mean, you can just rub it, you know, really well on a rag, and get all the paint off, and then go to your next color. Um, but because we're doing skin tone, I didn't want to risk having it too blue. So I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do a little burnt sienna. A little yellow, a little bit of red, and definitely, well, yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of the Payne's Gray in there too, just to gray it down, make it cooler. And then I like to use the warm white as a way to, um, I like the warm tone of the warm white. Don't use much red when you're mixing skin tone because it's, you, I mean, you need a red, but you don't want too much red because um, then it gets really pink, obviously. And it, it's so strong, you don't need much to put in your mixture. So you can see I'm just kind of going between the, some of these colors till I get something that I like. Now, Isabel used quite yellow toned skin colors in her work. I quite like. Sometimes it's helpful just to have a little, see that's way too muddy. There's a little more warmth. Let's 
getting better, but I think I want it more yellow. So you can tell, I mean, you can see working up a skin tone takes a little practice, takes a little time to get it right. Just keep playing with the red and yellow and a touch of blue. Um, the raw sienna is a nice place to start. It's going to give me a, a beginning. So. Now I'm going to want some different values of this skin tone. Some cooler values for shadows and some even lighter values for highlights. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that. Some piles of color. And because this will stay wet, I don't have to be overly concerned with it um, drying, you know, the way acrylics would, would dry, this will stay wet for a long time. Now this I'm putting on a little bit heavier. Trying to watch for value shifts. For areas that kind of are more in shadow. And for me, like, I often will just put the paint down and then blend it with another brush. Um, And you guys know portraits always look a little weird at first. some of the transitions here.
quite a lot of bluish tone kind of around her eyes where the shadow is. And again, even if this looks a little piecemealy at first, I can um, I can blend it later on. So it almost like a little purple in here. trying to get some of these shadow shapes in. The most important thing is to get some color down because then you can work with it. At least that's how I like to do it. I need a brush. I'm going to mix up some warmer light. So I often will use three brushes. One's kind of for shadow, one's for a lighter, those lighter touches, and one's for blending. And that's just how I like to roll with, with oils. And you have to keep them straight, that's the tricky part. Sometimes I'll even have another brush going, multiple brushes going. And because they stay wet, you don't have to worry about, you know, um, ruining your brushes. A lot of times the white of the eye is actually more like a gray. It's not white, white. Not typically. So I'm putting in some pretty strong lights.
So I can take a shadow here and put it right next to this really high light. Actually some shadow down here too. And this is where you gotta watch your values and really analyze what's happening on the planes of the face. So I can take these, uh, these areas where the, the shadow and the light are close. And then I can take another, oh, I don't think I want that brush. Yeah, no, that'll work. No, this one. You take a little brush. And you can soften the transition. Tone. What's what I mean by like kind of working the paint? And I really enjoy that aspect. Some people really like to do it a different way where they lay down the paint really fresh. I mean, that way is as beautiful too. This is just how I like to do it. And I'll even go in with like, so this is a, a Derwent Intense pencil. And because I want to preserve some of my line work, I might even go back in and draw some of what I lost. And this is kind of the first pass, you know, I might go back and um, add in more tones. I'm going to go into the lips now a little bit. 